In this video, we're going to cover sp2 hybridization of atomic orbitals. In sp3 hybridization for carbon, we took all of the orbitals that contained valence electrons for carbon and combined them all into four sp3 hybrid orbitals. In sp2 hybridization, we're going to take those same orbitals. Here we have an s orbital, and here are three p orbitals. But instead, in sp2 hybridization, only the three that I have in blue are going to mix and combine and hybridize. So what ends up happening is that one p orbital over here is unused. The s orbital and the two p orbitals form three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Each of these orbitals are now approximately one-third s and approximately two-thirds p because they came from one s orbital and two p orbitals. In carbon, which has four valence electrons, each of these orbitals is going to get one electron. This is what they look like when you put them all together. Here are the sp2 hybrid orbitals in purple, and here's the p orbital, and you can see both lobes of the p orbital here. The sp2 orbital, similarly to the sp3 orbital, is lopsided. So the sp2 orbitals should have little lobes. I'll try to draw them in here so you can get an idea of what they look like. So that's what this picture would look like with the little lobes. The distance between the sp2 hybrid orbitals is 120 degrees, which gives us our trigonal planar geometry. Now the sp2 hybrid orbitals are going to form sigma bonds. What happens with that p orbital that wasn't hybridized? p orbitals are used to form pi bonds. In this example here, you can see a p orbital on the left carbon, a p orbital on the right carbon. They mix and combine to form the pi bond. The pi bond is different from the sigma bond because it has a region both above and below the atoms. In the middle here is where the sigma bond is, and the sigma bond is formed by those sp2 hybrid orbitals coming together. Here's an example of sp2 hybridization. In this case, we have a carbon-carbon double bond. This molecule is called ethene. The carbon on the left is sp2 hybridized. The carbon on the right is sp2 hybridized. That means that each of these carbons has an unused p orbital. You can see the unused p orbital here and here in blue. The two p orbitals overlap to form the pi bond. The sigma bond is formed by the overlap of the sp2 hybrid orbitals. Each carbon has three sp2 hybrid orbitals forming three sigma bonds. One, two, three. So that means that the carbon-carbon double bond consists of one sigma bond and one pi bond. So again, the two p orbitals form the pi bonds and the three sp2 hybrid orbitals form the sigma bonds. All of the examples we've looked at so far have been with carbon, which has a valence of four. In the case of carbon, that means that each orbital gets one electron. What about oxygen? Oxygen has a valence of six, so that means that it has extra electrons that we have to worry about. Here's an sp2 hybridized carbon on the left, one electron in each of the sp2 hybrid orbitals, and one electron in the pi bond. On the right, we have oxygen. Oxygen has one electron in the sp2 hybrid orbital on the left, one electron in the p orbital, and then each of these sp2 orbitals on the right here in yellow have two electrons. They are not overlapping with anything, so they don't form any bonds. They just create a space for those lone pairs to hang out in. So this sp2 hybrid orbital here has one lone pair, and this sp2 hybrid orbital here has one lone pair. In the next video, we'll talk about sp hybridization.